Hello and welcome to everyone watching from here in Las Vegas, to our neighbors in Pahrump and Cedar City, as well as to anyone watching from around the country or even around the world. My name is Lily Ann Nyangao and I am bringing you the latest information in this evolving situation to keep us all safe and informed. Please keep in mind that the information I share is not intended to diagnose, treat, or cure any disease or condition. And it's also not meant to replace the advice given to you by your own healthcare provider who is more um, aware of your individual needs. So today we are talking about viruses. I'm going to cover what a virus is, how it works, and how I can kill it. The American Society of Microbiology describes a virus as a microscopic structure consisting of either DNA or RNA, and uh, this is encased in a protein capsule called a capsid. And on the outside of that, there may or may not be a lipid or fat layer. So. Uh, that is what a virus is, and it's debatable whether viruses are even alive because they must attack a host cell in order to survive and um, multiply. So viruses work by attaching to a host cell in the body. Indeed, the coronavirus has um, surface proteins called spike proteins that give it that characteristic crown-like appearance, um, hence the name coronavirus. Now it attaches using these spike proteins to gain entry to a host cell where it then goes on to hijack that cell's machinery and processes to produce more viral particles, which then explode out of the now destroyed cell and uh, these particles go on to attack other cells and repeat the process. So the coronavirus, uh, which has many names such as COVID-19, NCOV-19, and SARS-CoV-2 is part of a family of viruses called coronaviridae. These are not new. There are in fact human coronaviruses that are responsible for about 10 to 15% of the common cold. But COVID-19 is part of a zoonotic beta coronavirus family. Zoonotic means that they crossed over from animals into humans. Now others in this family you may recognize are uh, SARS and MERS. These are all single-stranded RNA viruses that have a capsid um, and a lipid layer. SARS first appeared in 2002. There were 8,098 cases and 774 deaths. This virus was controlled and eliminated. There have been no new cases since 2004. Now MERS, which is the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, appeared in 2012. There have been 2,521 cases and 866 deaths. Although not completely eliminated, MERS is relatively rare. Now enter COVID-19. To date, there have been 2 million reported cases worldwide and 129,000 deaths. This information is current as of April 15, 2020, and the numbers are increasing as we speak. So um, now that we've talked about what a virus is and how it attacks the body, let's talk about how we can kill it. Now I've talked about hand washing before and I will talk about it again. It is our best defense against the virus and you want to wash your hands 
with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Any soap that produces foam will do. You want to wash all surfaces of your hands, including the front and back thoroughly. And what this does is by uh, friction, it disrupts the, that lipid layer on the virus, um, as well as the soap will dissolve the lipid layer. And then once you rinse your hands, all those particles will then go down the drain. You can also use a hand-based, uh, uh, an alcohol-based hand rub or alcohol-based sanitizer to uh, clean your hands if they're not visibly dirty. Um, of note, there have been reports of people using drinking alcohol and the strongest of these only contains 40% alcohol content, which is not enough. You need to have at least 70% alcohol content to clean or disinfect a surface. Now you want to wash your hands after uh, blowing your nose, coughing or sneezing, after using the restroom, before eating or preparing food, after any contact with animals or pets, and before and after caring for a child, uh, babies, an elderly person, or anybody who needs assistance. The good news is that the coronavirus is relatively easy to kill and any household cleaner that contains either bleach, hydrogen peroxide, quaternary ammonium or citric acid, among uh, others found in household cleaners will kill the virus. You want to first clean the surface of any visible dirt or dust and then follow the instructions on your uh, household cleaner to disinfect the surface. Now, a surface needs to remain visibly wet for a certain period of time in order to disinfect the surface. This can range from about 30 seconds for hydrogen peroxide to about a minute for bleach and anywhere from three, five, or even up to 10 minutes for other household cleaners. So follow the instructions and it will tell you the amount of time that is needed to achieve disinfection. You can also see the CDC or uh, EPA websites for a complete list of um, EPA approved cleaners. Now you want to keep in mind to clean frequently used and touched surfaces such as doorknobs, countertops, light switches, remote controls, toilets, and, and any other hard surfaces such as hardback chairs and keys as well. And another surface that you should also clean frequently are electronic screens and keyboards on your phones, your tablets, and your computers. Now for these electronics, it's recommended to use 70% alcohol to clean them because it evaporates pretty quick. Just make sure to uh, wipe the surface dry and avoid pooling of liquid uh, to minimize any damage. Please make sure you have adequate ventilation during cleaning. Make sure there's plenty of fresh circulating air and do not mix cleaners, especially bleach and ammonia, as they can release toxic gases. Now, there are specific instructions when caring for a person that has COVID-19. Instructions were given to God's people in Leviticus chapter 15 when caring for, for a person that has a contagious disease, and many of those principles are applicable today. So do have a dedicated space or an area for them, um, their own room if possible, and use dedicated utensils and towels and 
even a trash can um, that is used just for them. Clean and disinfect any shared areas such as toilets immediately after they use them and use disposable gloves when handling any materials that they've used or disinfecting any surfaces that they've come into contact with. Or if you're using the reusable or rubber or latex gloves, make sure to have a dedicated pair for use um, with anything that the person has come into contact with or when cleaning their surfaces and do not use those gloves uh, for your regular household cleaning or for anything else. Wash their clothing, bed sheets, towels, and other garments in the warmest water allowed uh, by the garment. And if you cannot wash the garment, for example, if it's uh, like heavy curtains or comforters, Place them outside in the sun for a couple hours and the sun will also kill the virus. Do not shake the items that they've used as the, air, the virus may dislodge into the air and um, lodge into your nose or throat and cause disease. Wash dishes that they've used in hot water or, um, <clears throat> or place them in the dishwasher. Now to recap, Viruses are microscopic particles that cause infection by hijacking the host cells and we can stop the spread by hand washing and maintaining clean spaces. Remember that prevention is better than cure. So thank you all for doing your part to flatten the curve. Now continue to stay safe, stay informed, stay connected and God bless you all. Let us pray. Thank you, dear Lord, for the information that you've made available for us. Thank you for keeping us and our families safe. And we continue to rely on you to uh, provide protection and help in these times. We pray for a hedge around our first responders and our essential workers, as well as every member of our church family and our families at large. Um, we thank you for safety and for blessings, and we pray that you will help us to do our part, to remember to keep ourselves safe, to keep our families and loved ones safe as well. These things we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lillian. We really appreciate that, and we appreciate your prayer. And now we'd like to join you. If you'll remember, last week I presented a biblical way of praying in which you write down on a piece of paper your request or the people you're praying for, and you present them to God. And Jenny and I have done that, and I have a prayer list here that I would like to go through, and then I'm going to pray over this list, and then I'm going to ask you to also pray for this list. And then Jenny's going to read a list of the children of the church that we want to pray for. And when she's done reading, we'll have that prayer, and then we'll ask you to pray. Okay, so let's get started. On my list, I have Michelle Charles, Wanda Sherbaum, Mavis Krauss. Those are three ladies who are not only quarantined like the rest of us, but they're also in wheelchairs by themselves at home. And then there's Wendell Allen and Sandra Richards, Mary Pearson, Ruby Taylor, and Jean Gaddy. And then Ruby Mills and her daughter Tammy, who's taking care of her for Ruby is sick. There's Richard and Nina Howard, and, and of course, you know Richard has cancer, and Nina is taking care of her. We're praying for you. Mm -hmm. Kathy Conklin is still in rehab, and you know she was in the hospital, rehab, hospital, rehab since before Christmas. So we want to pray for Kathy. And then Brian Banks called me, and she said, pray for my family. And uh, 
And she uh, specifically mentioned James and also Curtis and Kamitra. And so we're going to pray for them. And by the way, Jenny, I, I wanted to mention this. She, she called me and she said last week we were watching um, the prayer time. And all of a sudden, her granddaughter, little uh, Kylie, Kylie, yeah, Kylie stood up and she said, and pointed to the the computer screen, he should pray for my sister, Trinity. Or Eternity. Eternity, that's right. Trinity is the boy, Eternity is, okay. Mm. <laughs> and, and, and Brian said, you, you mean Pastor Neary? And she said, yes, Pastor Neary. And so, mm -hmm. Kaylee, we're praying. And we're praying for you, too. And then I have Robert and Shirley Atkins, Diane Christensen, and her mother, Myrtle, who is in Minnesota, Belin Lowe and their family. And then Ron and Judy Greenwood wants us to pray for their son, Carl. And by the way, they're in, in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And then there's Ione Osby. And I own, I'm glad you're on your feet. And then there's Jenny Luana Harvey. <laughs> She's a favorite of ours. Hi, Luana. And then there's Cher Loveless. We want to pray for her also. And Papa Joe and Jackie, I talked to them the other day. They're doing fine. Michael Quillen is out of the hospital. He's at home recovering. Our sweet Jean Smith. Uh, we want to pray for her, Marla Thornton, Leland Schultz, and of course, Cordell Transcaso. He is stuck in Grenada. Grenada. He can't get out. He's been there now for what, uh, six weeks? Yeah. And the uh, airport's still closed. So we want to pray for him. Now, we also want to pray for the Pahrump Church family. The Oasis Church, uh, the Oasis Worship Center family for Cedar City and Red Cliff Church family. And so I want to lift these names up and these churches up before the Lord. So let's bow our heads together. Father, we thank you for the privilege of prayer. And that we could present these names to you, Lord. And to know that you know each one individually. You know their situation and circumstances. Which are exacerbated, Lord, because of the situation we're living in today with this COVID-19 virus. And being quarantined and shelves in grocery stores empty, and people afraid to go out. And we want you to reveal yourself to each one of these people we've mentioned and the church families we've referred to. We want you to let them know, Lord, you're there, because I know you are. You said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And you promise to get us through any trial that we face. And so, Lord, here is the list. These are your sons and your daughters. Bless them now in a special way. And now I'm going to pause so those at home themselves can pray for these names or anybody that they know of that I may not have mentioned that needs prayer.
In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, thank you for those prayers. As I was praying, I, I, could, picture, I could picture all of you in your home. Can't wait for the day we can go back to church. Now, Jenny, you have some of the children that uh, we need to pray for. And, and by the way, when I, we came to the children, I had a thought. And that is, if we don't say your name, it's an accident. We didn't mean to do that. And if you will text me during the week, next week we'll be sure to pray for you by name. We want to mention everyone, right? Yes, and we want to mention the, the children and the young people. So I'll start with Annabelle Bach. And there's uh, Anastasia Brooks. Adrian, Andrea, Aldrin, Damien, Gabriella, Ariella, Christopher, Isabel, Giselle, Figueroa, Emmanuel, and Rebecca, Monasia, and Malage, Cecilia, and Jack, Jalen, and yeah. Carson, Rihanna, and Jerrine and Nathan, right, and David, Joseph, and Paul, Marissa and Meshach, Celeste, Isabel, Gabe, and Christina, and Nola, and there's uh, Kelsey and Richard, Ricardo, and Estelle, and then there's Amaya and Ava, and there's Gwen and Caitlin, and there's Jessica and Alyssa. Ah, yes. All right. Well, let's pray for them. And then we're going to pause so that you can have time. Children, during the pause, I want you to pray. And if you know someone you need to pray for, your neighbor or your friend, a relative, or one of the, the young people or children that we forgot, I, I want you to pray for them at that time. Okay, let's bow our heads. Oh, Father, you love children. When the disciples tried to keep the mothers from bringing the kids, you rebuked them. And you rebuked them because you said the kingdom of heaven is made of children. And so you love the children, Lord. And whenever they were around, you would touch them and bless them, talk to them, and hug them. And during this time of confusion for our children, and maybe even, Lord, our young people, being quarantined at home, not knowing or understanding completely what's going on, what is a virus, how come we can't go out? Oh, Lord, let them know that you're there and that we will get through this. And that when children pray to you, Lord, or young people pray to you, you answer. Because your desire is that they know you, that you are real, and that you love them. So, Lord, bless the children. And let them know how much we miss being with them for children's story on Sabbath or Pathfinders or Adventurers or at the church school or wherever it may be. We miss them too. So, Lord, love on them so that they know and they're sure that you care. Now I'm going to pause so the children themselves can pray for one another. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Okay, thank you, children, for joining us in this uh, endeavor. And it was a, a real treat to include you and to know that if we missed a prayer request or a name, don't forget to text me so that next week we, we will include them. And now it's Pastor Ryan Johnson's turn. And Pastor, what do you have for us as we conclude this hour of prayer? Thank you so much, Pastor Neary. Praise the Lord, everyone. Pastor Ryan Johnson here. And tonight I'm joined by my lovely wife, Anissa. Hello. And I've asked Anissa to read our scripture for the evening. But before she does, I would like to set the scene a bit by reading from John, the 14th chapter. We are going to make an argument for prayer using Jesus as our example. May I? You can find out a lot about what was going on at this point in Jesus' earthly ministry just from looking at the words in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. Actually, I think I'm going to go 1 through 4. Let's read together, shall we? Jesus says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That's where I am. There you may be also. There we may be also. And then verse 4 says, And whither I go, you know, and the way, you know. So what's going on here? Told you, you can use this dialogue to find out. It opens up with, Let not your heart be troubled. The hearts of the disciples were troubled, very much like our hearts are very troubled right now in the midst of the things we're going through. But why were the disciples troubled? You can see in verse 3, because he said, I go. And as Pastor Neri is fond of pointing out, this was devastating to the disciples. You can't go, Jesus. Where are you going to go? We depend on you. We follow you every day. You are our teacher, our rabbi, our master. I often like to say when Jesus said that, he dropped a nuclear bomb on the place. It was almost too much to handle. So Jesus says, do not be troubled because I will come again. Hey, there's a sermon in there, isn't there, mm -hmm. wife? Let us not be troubled for he is coming again. <laughs> but let's go on. Then he said, you know the way. But Thomas in verse five said, Lord, we know not where you're going, and how can we know the way? And then Jesus says, and then Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This is how you know the way, Thomas. You know me. But there are a couple of ways of looking at this. When Jesus says, I am the way, he could mean I am the thoroughfare, I am the path, I am the road through salvation to glory, to the Father. And you cannot get there without going through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. But you can also see it this way. Jesus says, I am the way, the standard, the example. Do it this way. Follow me. Hmm. Well, let us do what Jesus commands and see his example as we look at prayer. Anissa, could you please read our text for the evening? Absolutely. We'll be reading from Mark chapter 14, verses 33 through 41. Hmm. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. And saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch. And he went forward a little, and fell on the ground, and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping, 
and saith unto Peter, Simon, Sleepest thou? Could, couldn't not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them sleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither wist they what to answer him. And he cometh the third time, and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Hmm. There's a whole lot that we could look at here. A lot of lessons. Enduring to the end. Hmm. Focusing on the things that are eternal and not the things of this world. But I would like to look at Jesus's response to being in what many might argue is the darkest hour in the history of this world. Now, I say argue because there were a lot of dark hours during this portion as Jesus as Jesus goes on toward the cross. When he lay in the tomb, that was dark. As, angels, as, as, as Satan and his minions were outside the tomb and human guards were there as well, hoping to keep the Savior inside, would he rise again as a dark hour? When he said it is finished, it was dark. As the universe looked on and saw the creator, he who said, let there be, let there be, let there be. And there was, there was, there was. He who also loved us so much that he was given and he came. Cries, it is finished. And dies. That was a dark hour right there. But here in the Garden of Gethsemane is a special darkness. Because we see the Savior crying unto the Father, asking if it be possible, let this cup pass, this burden pass, this task. Because you know, he didn't have to save us. No, I didn't. But would he? Would he who is innocent? Endure the cross for us. Our very fate trembled in the balance right here. That is a dark hour. And just to describe what Jesus is going through, I like this little line where it says, Jesus began to be very heavy. This is the same Jesus who said, take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light, but now the weight of the sins of all of humanity lying upon his shoulders, spiritually and physically. Can we say that, Anissa? For indeed, he sweat blood, did he not? He cried out, did he not? It was physical pain that he felt. And Jesus here, the eyes of the universe upon him, the fate of humanity trembling like this, Satan right there attacking him in every single way that a man can be attacked, that the Messiah can be attacked, that the Savior can be attacked. Jesus needs strength. So what does he do? Does he pop open a holy can of spinach, spinach <laughs> like Popeye? <laughs> what does he do? Do do lightning bolts come down and engulf the Savior and he powers up? How does Jesus find strength? And Anissa said it. Say it again, dear wife. He prays. He prays at the penultimate hour when he needed it most. He goes straight to the source. Mm. Shall we follow his example? But there's something else he does. He asks others mm. to pray with him. 
Jesus does not waste time. Jesus uses what the all theologians like to call an economy of words. He speaks and it is, it is effective. He does not ask for nothing, which means there is something to praying, being prayed with, and being prayed for. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. Did you say that? No. Jesus said that. And so, Jesus who says, I am the example, follow me, shows us what we should do in our dark hour. Let us pray. Let us do as Jesus commands and go to the source. Now, before we pray, this has been a very difficult week for many. And because it is a private thing, we're not allowed to say right now everything that has gone on. But no, friends, that we have family members and church members who are really hurting right now. And we need to lift them up. You may be hurting right now. Oh, let us go to the source. Also, Pastor Neary and Sister Neary have called out the names of the young people. God's jewels, his gems. Let us lift them up. Let us pray. Oh, our Father and our God in heaven. As you stretched yourself out upon the rock, upon the earth. And the minions of the devil sought to destroy you. You lifted your eyes to heaven. And there you found strength. We follow your example now. Lifting our eyes and our faces as it were toward you for strength. Lord, we are separated from each other physically, yet we are united in the consternation that the trials of this world bring. But we are more united because of the one God to whom we pray. We are your people. And as such, we look to you in absolute faith that you will bring us through. But hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline thine ear, O Lord. Lord, we lift up that brother whose name we cannot call right now and his wife and family who are really hurting right now. Lord, please be with them. We lift up those that are in the hospital, those whom we know and those whom we do not know. And the doctors and nurses who are attending, Lord, oh, please, Father, bless them. We lift up our churches, Lord. We who are in a conundrum, not really knowing how we are going to get through, but knowing that you will see us through. Bless us, Lord. Bless us. Forgive us, Lord, for we have sinned. Let nothing stand in the way of this prayer. We turn now to you where we have turned away before. We look to you where we have looked away before. We come to you though we have walked away before. Now, Lord. Now we come to you and beg your forgiveness. And when it is all said and done, let us be together like this, all of us at the welcome table, on the sea of glass and at last, O oh Lord, around your throne. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Thank you so much for praying with us. Back to you, Pastor Neary. Thank you, Pastor Johnson. We appreciate the encouragement. We appreciate the words and we appreciate your prayer. And folks, again, I'd like to thank you for joining us. 
And don't forget, we're doing this every single Wednesday, the Paradise Hour of Prayer. We want you to join us then too. But we also want you to be with us on Sabbath when we have our worship service. And we will look forward to meeting with you again this coming Sabbath. So stay tuned and also stay healthy, but stay looking up to Jesus Christ. God bless you.